hello uh, welcome back uh, it has been long since I uploaded a video so this is being a second lockdown here I'm going to use this time to create some videos I decided to make a, a new series of videos about laptop motherboard and in this one I'm going to focus on understanding a laptop motherboard schematics so in these videos we are going to use the schematics of a laptop in order to uh, interpret it according to the way the motherboard is laid out. So here with me I'm having a motherboard for ESA. This is ESA Aspire. This is actually ESA Aspire 5733. You can google it. If you, maybe you have it around you can follow together. But if you don't have it, don't worry what you are going to be learning can be applied on any other motherboard. So before we dig into the schematics, I'm going to use this video to explain the certain components on the laptop motherboard. There are many components on the motherboard that he, most of the people who are in this business or who are enthusiasts don't understand what most of these components on the motherboard are. So today I'm going to go through most of these components, uh, the ones you saw on this motherboard tell you what they are called and what their functions are so that you can be able to identify them and understand them even if you go to the level of the interpretation using the schematics so i'm going to start with this i know many of you know this this is called ram and this is ddr3 you can identify ddr3 by the size of this arrow yes so ddr3 this arrow is a bit uh, coming towards the middle DDR2 is uh, this arrow is around here and DDR4 this arrow comes closer almost to the middle around here so this is DDR3 the next one this is a, a heat sink this is the heat sink that it draws the heat away from the processor and at the extreme end is where the fan is connected this fan blows the cold air through this heat sink in order to cool down this processor so if you happen to have a laptop that is overheating uh, is abruptly shutting down you might come and take a look at this heat sink and the processor so the next one is the processor and since we've been talking about the heat sink and the heat this is what we call paste uh, it is actually called thermal paste the way it looks it shows to be old and dry Actually, this is a common issue in many laptops. When you see a laptop that is abruptly shutting down, turning on and then off, the issue could be from the heat sink. If the heat, sorry, if the thermal paste is old, the laptop as immediately as it turns on, the system will, will, will identify that the paste is not able to maintain the temperature of the processor. And that will cause what we call abrupt shutdown in order to save or protect the processor from burning out and uh, down here i want to show you this is what we call the cmos battery this cmos battery is good because it keeps the information actually this is the battery that powers up the chipset when the battery and power is out of the motherboard this is the guy that keeps your settings you buy settings, uh, the guy that keeps time, the guy that keeps the passwords. Basically, it does not keep the password, but maintains those passwords as the laptop is shut down. And uh, in fact, this guy used to keep passwords in, the f in, 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 in old laptops. And if you guys remember, most of the old laptops, if you needed to reset the BIOS password, all you had to do was to remove this BIOS battery. Well, that one changed in these new laptops, but it used to to, uh, to keep passwords and initial software and settings. So as you've seen, I've taken it out. And uh, let me also give you a simple tip right now. If this battery is old, most of laptops turn on but don't have display. Some laptops will not even turn on. So what you do in case of such a, an issue, you can come and take out this BIOS battery and it shot these two. This is a positive. You can see at the extreme end, it has a plus sign. And this is the negative. Actually, this is the ground. So if you have a tweezer or anything that you can use to, 
short out these two connectors like this for some few seconds this is able to reset the bios settings this could do help your laptop to power on again so the next thing i want to show you is this connector this is the wi-fi connector and most of the wi-fi connectors have got names sorry i didn't even show you these labels uh, this is the bios battery and you can see from here it's called j bat one which means battery one you would find out that this this one is the battery the inbuilt battery connector most of them have labels that actually interpret what is connected onto that connector. So I was telling that this is the Wi-Fi connector. This is where your wireless card are connected. And this is the one. These are the wireless card. This is how they look. If you're having a laptop that has got no Wi-Fi, has got no, uh, does not connect, you have installed drivers, but under Wi-Fi icon, there is an X, there is a, uh, an ELA exclamation signs you could open up a laptop and look for a connector of this nature uh, some of these connectors they try to look like those of the SSD connectors but most times they differ in the sizes so the next thing I want to show you is this one this is called a chipset this chipset is it actually confuses many people with the, with the graphics in old laptops we had two of these chipsets. There was what you call the North Bridge and the South Bridge. But most of these new laptops, we have only one chipset. And in other new laptops from the fourth generation to fifth and above, we no longer have this chipset as separate. They are all embedded in one chip, which is called a processor. Most of the Haswell's and the Broadwell processors have got inbuilt chipsets okay so to give you a brief story about the chipset the chipset is the master of the motherboard in fact the chipset is the one that determines what kind of processor that the motherboard can support the chipset you'll be surprised to know that it's the first component apart from the charging eyes to be turned on the chipset is the one that turns on the motherboard and sends the instructions to the processor okay so this chipset is very crucial on the motherboard then the next one is this big chip most people call it ene the reason why they call it ene is because this chip called ene was the most popular used embedded control chip i think you can see the name but in a schema it's called embedded control others call it ec so this one most of its functions are it controls the keyboard, it controls the mouse, it controls the touchpad, it controls uh, most of the, the power rails on the motherboard. It is a very, very crucial component on the motherboard. In our next videos, we shall focus more on those components and how they operate.